This beautiful pigment I'm working on is Pyrrhal Orange PO73. It's a DPP pigment from Crema Pigmente. DPP stands for Diketo Pyrrhalo Pyrrhal. Pyrrhal comes from the Greek word pyros, meaning fiery. It's more opaque than other organic pigments, but it can still be used beautifully in washes in watercolor paint. Discovered in the 1980s, the pyrrhal pigments are great and non-toxic alternatives for the lead, molybdate and cadmiums within the red-orange pigment options. From the Kramer website, because of growing concern about possible health hazards related to the use of cadmium pigments in the coatings industry, chemical companies have long sought after a possible organic substitute. This PO73 is a great solution for those concerns. It's the most chromatic pigment currently known. Chromatic means how much color or wavelengths it reflects. It's not an orange pigment with the highest value, or what we would consider as a brighter orange, or a lighter orange. For me, I like benzimidas alone, PO62 for that, which is more towards the yellow side of the spectrum, whereas PO73 is more of a scarlet orange leaning almost towards the red side of the spectrum. This is also visible in its spectral reflectance curve, which I make in this video later on. Hue-wise, it's very close to PO43, perinone orange, which is just a little less chromatic and less light fast. PO73 is a very staining pigment with a slight drying shift, meaning it loses saturation from wet to its dry state on paper. As Bruce McAvoy said on handprint.com, I have very high regard for this pigment. It is everything modern pigment chemistry should be, provided you use the transparent single pigment brands. This makes a very versatile and reliable paint, worth trying for florals and other brilliant painting styles and splendid as a warm, almost pinkish tint for blush color for Caucasian flesh tones. Later on in the video, I will show an example of what it means with that. For now, I'm going to make some paint. So, while I'm cleaning my slab here, please consider giving this video a like, and if you don't follow my channel yet, please subscribe and turn on notifications, so you'll be the first one to know when I drop my new videos. I hope you like the rest of it. I'm going to finish this paint. Enjoy. So today, instead of making a spectral curve reading of that swatch, I'm going to show you something else. I made a little contraption of, uh, well, it's a 3D printed, it's made of plastic, and uh, I'm using it to make a spectral curve of pure pigment. So what I'm doing here is I'm scooping it into this little adapter, which I made, and um, it's a little mold around it little stamp to compress the pigment and I have put a little tape underneath it a little piece of tape which I can put over it um, I'm using this tape because it's the thinnest plastic cover I could think of to get rid of most you know things that would change the spectral curve of the pigment so making sure that there's not too much air in between and my apologies for not showing the entire screen. I'm making a spectral curve of the pure pigment. So I don't want to put my spectrometer directly 
into the pigment as you would understand but as you can see here a steep high line towards that red end of the spectrum as i said it is almost a scarlet pigment So I just swatched some, well, a wash on paper. And as you can see here, the mass tone on the, on the slab, it's that in your face bright orange. And when I scrape it off the slab, which I also noticed making paint, I see some pinkish kind of shine in it. And this is that Caucasian flesh tone Bruce McAvoy was talking about. So it is a beautiful kind of soft, peachy color whereas the mass tone is very bright and has a well, quite a large drying shift as I notice here on my paper the wash not so much so I really I really like it it's this dry and it's not changing color anymore it's it's almost pinkish I love it <laughs> 